understand what I'm about to tell you, you need to do something first. You need to believe in the impossible. Can you do that? What do you desire that you can't have? When I eat a brain, I get visions. Don't ever come back to Gotham. You have failed this city. Jesus, what kind of a preacher are you? There's about a dozen ways that I could stop you right now. But I don't think I have to. Because where I'm from, your grandson becomes the greatest hero in the universe. Now you should at least give your brother a moment to say something heroically clever. In the future, my friends may not be heroes, but if we succeed, they will be remembered as legends. Welcome to the DC TV Report for the week ending Saturday, May 18th, 2019. I'm Edward O'Hare, nicknamed to be determined. And I'm Sarah Netley, academic by day, freelance writer by night. We're here to bring you recaps, news, and commentary for all live-action television shows based on DC Comics. And for the last time in a long time, I think, we had six episodes this week. Yes, including three penultimates and two finales. I am super glad you were here to count that out for us, because <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the yeah. CW continues to confound by staggering their finales and things like that. I don't quite understand the schedule they're on, but okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know it's it seems like it's two stages it's like this week we get flash and arrow and then next week's everything else um but yeah 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 it's uh a lot going on plus we get doom patrol and i zombie man yeah wow busy busy wow wow uh I'd like to like to uh thank thank everyone for listening uh also if if you're a fan of lucifer uh, and you haven't checked out our season four breakdown uh, of Lucifer that is up that that went up last Monday um, and it's it's over two hours long and uh, we go episode by episode as I binge them um, and yeah yeah that was a lot of fun we've gotten we've gotten some good responses from that yeah it's uh if maybe you haven't watched the show yet uh maybe you have been meaning to get around to it maybe this is the weekend you did that we are here for you maybe you're gonna do it next weekend we will be there for you then but it's good don't sleep on Lucifer yeah yeah all right cool 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 all right what uh uh wow wow um sarah how are you how are things <laughs> Good. I'm good. Before we hit record, Ed said to me, you sound a little down. And I was like, oh, thanks, buddy. I mean, it was a, it was a long week, but oh, you just mean my volume. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. 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 No, it was a it was a good week. I got some stuff done. I didn't get a bunch of lot of stuff done that I needed to do. So it's it, good. It's all good. How about you? I'm good. I'm feeling good. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it it's it's just weird. Like we 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 get down to business and then it's like, ah, should we chat a little bit before we dive into the episodes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we should. Starting with last Monday, I woke up feeling a little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, all right, all right. Well, we we got we got six of these, and they're all really important. So we probably should just start, right? Yeah, let's do it. All right, all right. First up is Supergirl, season four, penultimate episode, Red Dawn. Alex began having flashbacks from her memories of Kara growing up. Kara asked Alex for help tracking down Red Daughter. Lena gave Lockwood the bad news about being a pawn in Lex's plan and got concerned that James's body was having a bad reaction to Harunel. After messing up a Wookiee gambit with Nia and John at a hidden prison for aliens, Brainy's mind accidentally realigned to act more like his ancestors. Last minute reveal, President Baker informed the nation of Lex Luthor's heroic victory in Kaznia. I think it's fair that I warn everybody that I'm going to spend this entire segment talking about Brainy pretending to be Ben Lockwood. That is literally the only thing I want to talk about. It was so good. Yeah. I, I saw even John Cryer said that was his favorite moment of the episode. Um. <laughs> Sam Witwer playing Brainy 
playing Lockwood was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and of and so obviously the children were like, nope, this isn't right. What's going on? <laughs> Oh, good. Ben, or uh, Sam Witwer is a gift. That's all. <laughs> He's a gift. <laughs> so, Ed, have I told you that he and I are roughly the same age and he is from my state? And it makes me wonder, since he is a theater person, did we compete in the same speech tournaments? Ooh. Have I talked about this before? I don't know. I don't yeah, he's from he's from around Chicago, and we competed in a ton of Chicago high school speech tournaments. I feel like at some point I probably had Sam Witwer in some kind of like HI round. Mm. So that's all. Cer- certainly. <laughs> I don't think there's any way to ever find that out. <laughs> <laughs> certainly possible. Certainly possible. Yeah. 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 Well, you know. <laughs> anyway, I didn't mean to di- di- distract us with that. I just thought that was incredibly fun. Brainy. Oh, my gosh. So what did you think about this transition? Uh, I'm, I'm very afraid. I'm very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. The green teeth was startling. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I don't understand why he, they can't make the rest of his skin that green. But. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I thought, I thought it was a cool idea, a cool moment, did not see it coming. Um, it seems like he's still on mission, but has, you know, f- has decided that, you know, it doesn't matter if his teammates die in the process. Um, so yeah, yeah. And me and John are in a lot of trouble. Uh, and I don't know how they're going to realign that realignment. Um, this is this is not good. This is not good. Well, it does. I mean, I have no idea what they have planned for next season. But it, Brainy as the big bad is kind of interesting. I, I don't know that that's what they'll do. And I'm not sure I want them to do that. But that... I, I always, I always love, I mean, it's the same thing with what I just talked about, Sam, where I love the challenge for an actor to take this character and turn it, you know, 90 degrees or 180 degrees. And that was so fun to see him recalibrate that performance. I am not opposed to seeing more of that. But yeah, poor Dreamer, to see him watch her shuffling toward that portal and just turning his back and walking away, that was cold. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Good. Good stuff, though. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. Um. Uh. So, at what point in the episode did you realize that Alex was gonna figure out uh Kara's secret? Honestly, when they put the previously on, and I was like, "Well, <laughs> there it is." <laughs> How about you? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much from the moment she started that dream, it's like, ah, uh, okay, she's gonna find out. <laughs> and it's good. It's time. It was time. Um, and I thought it was well done. I mean, uh, as with as with most things on Supergirl, don't think too much about the science or the anything like that. Just go with the emotions in the storytelling. That's how you enjoy Supergirl. Um, I thought it was well done. I thought that that reveal and and the boy that scene of her ripping the grass out of the ground and saying take the grass a really really powerful stuff. I I really liked it. How about you? Yeah, yeah. I thought that was really emotional. Sort of Kara getting her ass beat by Red Daughter. Yeah, that was rough. Okay, the purple lightning. What's up with that? I have no idea. <laughs> So sometimes you can be like, well, in the comics, but in this case, it's just, oh, Red Daughter has purple lightning. Yeah, because right. why not? Because um, <laughs> why not? Because they had to have a, a not evenly matched fight, I guess. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. They they had to have because, you know, because it's weird because we had last season, you had a villain who went toe to toe with Kara and, you know, um, and and I, I guess you you had a you had to up the ante a bit. Um, uh, yeah, and it, it, exactly, you had to give her some kind of different power. It, it, you know, it's it's weird because like Red Daughter is, you know, it's it's a version of Red Sun, uh, which was a completely different story in the books. So, um, yeah, I've, I, I'm sure, of course, she'd have some Luther tech, and of course, purple is is yeah, definitely Lex Luther's favorite color. Um, so that, <laughs> <laughs> as as far as that goes, that tracks. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Kara was, was not worse for wear. Um, and, uh, that whole like sunlight all of a sudden, you know, coming out of the ground and, and re-energizing her that, 
that was a little weird. That that. Well, uh, Red Daughter punching out the sun was a little weird too. <laughs> I'm still not a hundred percent sure where the sun went. I, I, I honestly, I was like, did she turn into a different time zone? <laughs> what's happening but again you just got to go with the the emotional realness of the storytelling as opposed to the punched her real hard son is gone okay <laughs> the other thing i had to let go gosh i liked this episode i feel like i'm nitpicking all of it but uh mm-hmm. how the casnian invasion nobody heard about it until they turned on tv and were like oh wait what <laughs> how did how is that how the deo is finding out well it's what? it's, it's- it it's a wag the dog, Sarah. You know? <laughs> I mean, genuinely is that did they I thought they were actually gonna invade. Like the impression I got from Lex was that they were actually gonna invade. But I did wonder, God, I love that movie. Just a quick second for how good Wag the Dog is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I wondered if that was all shot like he he wants a calico kitten. C- can we get a calico kitten? Yeah, yeah. Like was yeah. it like that? <laughs> Yeah, my yeah, it was it was it, Lex made their tech just strong enough that his that his real suit would be able to defeat it handily, um, you know, and then he could you know there there could be the sense of the danger, and then he could just take all the credit and he, oh he's a but hero did they now. actually invade? I mean, they would. I I just don't know how far the wag the dog went with that. Is what I'm saying. I I think it's something that just happened very fast. You know, just just enough for them to get that headline. Well, and I you guess know. Alex was busy with the Kara stuff, so she might not have been answering texts. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> for our younger listeners, Wag the Dog <laughs> is a movie that came out in 1997 starring Dustin Hoffman, Robert De Niro. Anna yes. It's good. Yes, yes, okay. yes. I show and- it in class sometimes. Yeah, Dustin Hoffman is a movie producer who's hired by the government to stage a fake war. To cover up to a distract. real sex scandal. Yes. That the president is having. Yes. That's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Um, <laughs> Maybe we should review a 90s movie every week on this podcast. <laughs> I mean, we kind of do. <laughs> we kind of do. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, Supergirl. So uh, Supergirl and and Kara, or I'm sorry, Red Red Daughter and Kara have their face off, finally. Yeah, yeah. Um, Red Daughter is hardcore stalking her. (laughs) Yeah. It's upsetting. And and she thinks Kara is uh, an indulgent American with too much stuff. Yeah, and I thought I thought it was a fair fight. You know, it was it was (laughs) not a fair fight. I thought it was a good fight. Um, I thought the action in it was well done. I was impressed. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. I, the CW shows, and well, I can save this comment for Arrow, but the CW shows have kind of ruined me for fight scenes in other episodes of TV right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They actually, yeah, they they go all out. They go all out. Um, yeah. God bless you, Whiskey Cavalier. You really tried, but like, you can't do that and then switch to Arrow. It's just not. <sighs> oh, oh, honey. Just... Oh, you you watch that show? <laughs> I do. Oh. The power of Scott Foley is very strong. I I I know, but like there there are some shows that the moment you see the commercial, you know it's going to get canceled inside ten episodes. A hundred percent. But Ed, do you, do you know me at all? <laughs> Dueling spies who hate each other but are compelled to kiss. Obviously, I'm going to like be there for every second. And the cancellation was inevitable, as inevitable as the tides. And yet, will I watch the finale next week with a little like tear in my heart? Yes, yes, I will. <laughs> hey, Matt, you're you're lucky they kept airing <laughs> anyway. episodes. All right. <laughs> I know the fact that the whole season got aired was amazing. So yeah, those fight scenes are not as good as Eros fight scenes. The writing is not as good as anything else on TV. It's fine. It's fine. Um, we so <laughs> uh, we didn't talk about Lena. Um, uh, yes. Yeah. Lena that when she chews out Lockwood and kind of like, you know, removes the veil for him and he, and he sees, you know, everything that, that, the the truth about his whole rise to power, I I thought that was vicious. I thought that was that was really cool to watch. 
I like me a cold calculating Lockwood or not a cold calculating uh, Luther Lockwood also. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Luther. That was a that was a good Lena moment. I wish I've said this before. I feel like we've lost a little bit of Lockwood's cunning and abilities in the back half of the season. Understandably so. There's a lot going on. Um, I wish we'd had a little bit more time with him grappling with where did I come from? How did I get here? What was it all for? Instead of just punching Otis. But I will say I enjoy Otis and and a good Otis Ben scene is always going to make me happy. So yeah, I liked Otis kicking back in that in that safe house with like a plate of donut holes. The whole thing looked like a kind of sweet setup, actually. <laughs> he's he's such a simple creature, you know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of envy him. Otis looks like he's got it made. Although, uh, is he dead now? I don't understand the metallo power. Can you pop that heart back in? Is he going to be okay? Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's just assume. <laughs> Yeah, Mattel has always been like a yeah, it's 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 power to kryptonite. What do you what do you want me to tell you? Uh <laughs> it does what the plot needs it to do. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but uh but yeah, and James, James, uh yeah, James, uh ah, not looking so good. I don't you know, I mean that they're saying he's fine. I don't I don't think he's fine. I uh yeah, I think I think we're gonna need to get Heronel out of him within the next episode. <laughs> Can they do that? Lillian says she can. I don't know. You know, and I did. Oh, I did like Lillian telling Lena she loves her. That was and being mad about it, <laughs> saying it and just being like, <laughs> yeah. Oddly enough, that that scene feel. I I don't know why, and you're gonna think this is weird when I say it. But that scene, that whole interaction with them feels very Irish. I'd like you to say more things about that, please. (laughs) Just in a sense, you know, growing up in an Irish family, there's always this sense that you all love each other. But you can't really say it. I don't know why that is. It's just a thing. And we all kind of like carry this lump in our throats where it's like, hey, man, I and, and obviously like the way you act and everything, you, you feel a lot. And, you know, even when you fight and get angry with each other, but there's just this unspoken thing where it's like, we can't say it out loud. I don't know why that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's just this. It's just this moment where you're on your deathbed and you're talking with, and you're talking with your wife and goes, tell, tell Johnny I love him. No, no, I, I, I love my son. Don't you ever tell him I said that. That, that's. I don't know why that is. And then you've been a good wife, Shannon. <laughs> And that's it. <laughs> how fa- how many generations removed are you from an actual thick Irish accent in your family? Like how many generations over are you? Uh, four or five. I think. So you don't have like an old world grandma who's like. No, no. Okay. No, okay. no. I think my, my great, gr- uh, my great, great grandparents were from Ireland. Okay. Um, yeah, but and it depend, depending um... on yeah, depending on the side of the family. I think on my grandmother's side, um, actually, I, I think so. So you know, on on one of my grandfather's sides, he traced it back to the revolution. I think there was a uh, there was someone. I think his name was Charles Lynch from Georgia who signed the Declaration of Independence. Um, oh, I had no idea. I was on here with the daughter of the American Revolution. That's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes, I am a daughter of the American Revolution. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My paternal relative came over from England on a boat in the dead of the night in the 1800s. I have no such lineage. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know what he was running away from. but So the moral of this story is after watching this episode, if I found out the Luthers were Irish, I would not be surprised. Um <laughs> Uh, yeah um well and the funny thing is uh lena her the actress is real irish so mm -hmm. you know maybe that maybe you're seeing that come through maybe that's just informs every how long have we been talking about supergirl yeah yeah this is we've got to move on wait 
<laughs> but uh, okay. but yeah, so yeah, now it looks like we're gonna have the showdown between Kara and Lex, which is yes. yay. <laughs> yes, and probably by the time you're listening to this, we already will have the new Supergirl episode. But apparently, Lex is gonna reveal heretofore unseen depths of evil. So bring it, Lex. Bring it. <laughs> All right, next episode. DC's Legends of Tomorrow, Season 4, Penultimate Episode, Terms of Service. Neron posed as Ray Palmer to announce a new app that would help track magical creatures and give him new souls. Gary used his fairy godmother to force the legends to hang out with him. John wandered hell, trying to avoid the demons he had sent there, to approach the triumvirate for a deal to free Ray's soul. Last minute reveal, young Zari watched the dragon egg hatch. Now, I've never been in possession of a dragon egg that I'll confirm publicly, but don't you keep track of that really carefully? Yeah, you do. You're really supposed to. You, you, you really should not let that thing out of your sight, you know? Just carrying it around is probably uh, uh, pro- probably not a good idea. But the backpack is smart. I mean, I liked I liked that they had like I don't know if that's one of those that you carry small puppies around in, you know, with the bubble. But I just yeah, that was funny. Um, yeah. And it's interesting. I had forgotten where Zari fit in the timeline. I forgot that she was a kid in 2019. I was thinking she was more far future than that. So that was a nice reminder that, oh yeah, she grew up in a terrible, terrible time, which is not that far removed from our time. <laughs> so yeah. awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'd forgotten that too. For some reason, I thought it was a little further in the future, uh, but that's really funny. I, well, that mm-hmm. makes me wonder, are, that's not a retcon, is it? I mean, it's, it's, is it both us misremembering and that's not the show being like, eh, 2019 it, sounds good enough. It probably, it, it probably is us misremembering. Legends is, is better than that. Legends usually keeps good track of that. <laughs> Legends mm-hmm. is better than that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I did cackle gleefully at the thought that you could sign a, a term of service that would give up your soul. Cause how many of those have we been like, yes, iTunes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Was, wasn't that part of... <laughs> Wasn't wasn't that actually in the iTunes terms of service for like a day? Like someone snuck that in as a joke. You then... know, you know, it was I, every time you get a new cell phone. I mean, like, do they divide our soul into each little? I don't know, like Horcruxes. Do we have pieces of our soul in every term of service we've ever? <laughs> but that was fun. Uh, I like Ray Ray Palmer. Yes, that Ray Palmer. I I am super enjoying his dominate the room demon performance this is a lot of fun mm-hmm. um let's see what else uh fa- fairy godmother uh tabitha's tricky yeah it's tricky yeah yeah it was yeah she and she she tricked nora she, she tricked, tricked her but good yep she tricked a oh, man man for nora's sake i hope she can at least get a cuter fairy godmother dress because that thing is horrible <laughs> Which is the hilarious joke, I know, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, uh, it's also like, uh, some, like Gary, I am very confused with right now. Because like, he started out as just this, you know, nerdy, nerdy little guy. And now all of a sudden he's, he's, he's like psychotic. Like, like he <laughs> needs, like it, it's to the point where like he needs, he needs mental health. You know, he need he needs mental help. You know, he he should probably be in a sanitarium right now. <laughs> Do they still have those? Well, I could take him back in time and drop him at one, I suppose. Psych um, ward, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I meant. <laughs> An inpatient facility designed for people who need, you know, treatment. Um I I thought it was kind of he I feel like he swung back to his little nebbishy self a little bit, um, but is still being petty and uh, the book club thing was really funny so yeah i'm i'm not quite tracking where he is right now but i do agree it's not a healthy development for poor gary green and i don't know how you come back from that next season if you do i i mean i have no knowledge either way but like hmm. all right what's up with the cat <laughs> she's gone <laughs> Kicked her out. That was barbecue. She just wanted to be part of the. Co- She's just really into legends. Okay, sorry everybody. 
<laughs> she wanted Here's to remind the- everybody that Nate is better this season. <laughs> Nate is better this season, although we didn't see a lot of him this episode. <laughs> well, and that's fine too. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Oh, uh, can we talk about the Astra stuff? Yeah, yeah. That is from NBC, right? Astra was from the original show. Yes, that was from Constantine, uh, which aired on NBC. That was like his big thing, uh, you know, in in the pilot. Like the thing that's hanging over his head, his baggage, is that. Um, he was trying to save this little girl and ended up, you know, letting her, uh, you know, she ended up being sent to hell, um, for something that he did. So, you know, now he has a chance to save her and it turns out, no, no, she, she grew up in hell and she's really liking it. Yeah. Um, I just, I, it fascinates me that that storyline would hop over like that. I love it that they've continued it. And then the, the, yeah, the grown up version, obviously the actress they used it in the NBC show is a little older now. So it made sense, but yeah, I, I, I like that emotional payoff for John. A lot of fun. Um, I'm anxious for him to get back with the rest of the legends. So I don't like him when he's separate. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, and I, I thought, I thought the way that they built up hell, it just looks like it was the ultimate, uh, you know, eighties punk club. Um, I, I thought that was a really interesting take on hell and it felt very in line with Constantine. If you know him from the comics. Yeah. Oh, from, Oh, comics. comics. Okay. Mm-hmm. I just was surprised that, that, uh, the devil wasn't Tom Ellis. That's how much Lucifer we did last week. And I was like, wait, Oh, <laughs> wrong one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we didn't meet Lucifer. We met Satan and Beelzebub and, Bialion. Um so I I mean Satan is Lucifer, so we can we can but still. <laughs> um, <laughs> um but yeah, yeah, and I'm just going through um oh and the uh um would you okay, would you have gone to that would you have downloaded that app? Um let, let's let's put it that way, that app that Ray was hawking. Uh eyes yeah i know myself even if i had reservations about like what about the privacy implications i'd at least want to see how it worked so yeah i'm one of those people who would for curiosity do it have it on there for like a day and then be like nah i don't think so but yeah yeah i 100 percent would have how about you yeah no i'm i was i was never really a pokemon go guy so didn't play in the real life version wouldn't really appeal to me (laughs) Um, I mean, and that's, that's exactly what I was thinking of. I downloaded Pokemon go and for like a week I was like, okay, this is cool. And then I realized, no, this is not, I don't, I'm a, I, I don't mean to say I'm a grown up, but I, that's not how my, cause I know plenty of grown ups who I'm going to stop talking right now. God bless you. Pokemon <laughs> go people. You're, you're much better than I am. I was bad at Pokemon. So, and I was also just too old to have played it before. So I didn't really understand the like, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> some good times though it was it was fun driving around and then just seeing a parking lot full of people just walking around but not not saying anything to each other yes staring at their phones thank you it was a strange just, time for us as a country yes yeah. yes a, m- a much simpler time perhaps um <laughs> concur <laughs> uh also we had a minotaur i'm never not going to be amused by a minotaur so you know plus yeah 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 and uh and yeah yeah so that egg that egg cracked and um is that dragon gonna be the key to stopping neuron you think maybe um i do appreciate the way we have a theme park that has been started and then all these magical creatures on the loose who just want to be like, I don't know, helpful and safe. So how are those two things going to co- collide? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see Hey, Hey world. Let's just say that much. <laughs> Me too. Um, <laughs> and if they finish that construction, that is the greatest construction crew I've ever seen. Um, but here's open. It could happen. <laughs> It could, it could, it could. 
All right. Uh, is there any news for Legends? Uh, just that we go into the finale, and this one is set in the present, which is unusual. This show typically is in a different era for the finale, but in the present, they're going to have kind of an identity crisis, feeling like the A-list heroes might be better received to deal with this problem, but they are the, like Sarah said this past week, we're the rejects of history, you know, so they're going to have to deal with it. So, uh, yeah, slightly different tone to the finale. I am looking forward to seeing it, but I'm not looking forward to saying goodbye to the show for the summer. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's not coming back till mid season next year. So you know, enjoy it. Well, it lasts. <laughs> Say goodbye for a long time. It'll be back though. It'll yeah, it be will. Back. It will. It will. All right. Uh, all right. Um, Moving on to Arrow, season seven finale. You have saved this city. Team Arrow worked to stop the Ninth Circle from destroying the city, and Oliver was hopeful that he could finally get through to Amiko. In the future, Mia led one last offensive on Galaxy One to free Star City from Archer. Last minute reveal... Happy that Mia and William had grown up to be fine adults, Felicity walked through the breach with the monitor, ready to see Oliver again. All right, I, I don't want to talk about anything but Felicity, honestly. <laughs> we could do that. Can we just dispense with the Amico stuff right away and then get to the rest of it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it was... I was a little bummed, but I get it. And, and like for this show that actually did seem to be the right way to go with that arc that, you know, she doesn't really get that redemption, but she, she realizes the mistake that she made. Um, and, uh, and yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, and, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to see her die. Um, I was a little surprised, but I had to remind myself, you know, when Arrow started, it was, it was the dark show. Right. So, uh, Oliver's sister not getting a chance to live and rehab herself. <sighs> yeah, I guess that kind of fits the tone. But yeah, I, I was surprised with how that character unfolded. I do you feel like her claims were never really? She had a a rough childhood, but like, was it that rough? I mean, uh, I mean, <sighs> I I think it was more. I think it was more thinking of what she could have had if her dad recognized her. Um, and I think it was more jealous of what Oliver got than what she ended up with. All right. I can see that. I don't know. I just, is she felt maybe, maybe if they had emphasized, you know what? Let's not quarterback it's Monday afternoon quarterback. I don't, and I don't know. That's a sports thing. I said it wrong. It's Monday morning quarterback. Whatever. Well, I like to sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> but you see what i'm saying i don't think we need to pick apart that storyline because it's it, it's done and that's fine i i did like the betrayal of her by you know people she thought were going to work with her um <clears throat> overall did this feel like it could have been the last episode of arrow like this oh, could definitely. have been the se the series finale yeah yeah and just to to i mean to, to kind of jump ahead i feel like this was the finale for arrow and the next season is going to be a 10 episode mini series of oliver queen's adventures in the multiverse um i wouldn't be surprised that's that's a that's an astute way to put it i wonder if it's going to be either setting up the spinoff of of the queen children or uh oliver's preparation for crisis and i'm guessing it's going to be a little bit of both yeah but yeah this really really and, and, and it was lovely i mean other than my my amico stuff um i i just i thought everybody wrapping everything up you know that you have roy back there in the house you just had uh, bringing back together all these original players it was it was wonderful <laughs> it was a nice <laughs> finale for the show if that's kind of what it was <sighs> yeah yeah i thought i thought they they set it up nicely it seems like the city's safe and uh diggle and and renee and uh dinah are ready to take on that uh are ready to to take up the mantle um you know and and of course they're going to fail miserably um 
well, you know. <laughs> but in who the knows future, what's going to happen with the crossover? Yeah, yeah. But twenty years down the line, it's going to work out. Um. <laughs> uh, and this was the first episode of the week that made us realize, oh, they're going hard into the crisis stuff with the finale. Yeah. You know, th- this was the one where uh, when I realized they were going to show us what Oliver actually told the monitor in the past c- crossover. <sighs> that was exciting. And then, well, we'll talk about it in the flash, but yeah. 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 I thought, yeah, yeah that was, uh, that, that was, that was really intense. Um, we did have, uh, we did have three tweets. Actually, it's the same thing told over three tweets from at Molly 2910. Um, uh, and she basically laid out her ideas for season eight of Arrow. Um, uh, I, I, and I thought this would be interesting to talk about. So it's uh, one ending for Arrow. God damn it. I need more tissues. So now we know Felicity cannot come back. She can't ever. That explanation does help me understand why Felicity won't be in season eight. Uh, predictions for season eight of Arrow. I'm expecting Argus to start showing signs of going bad in season eight to tie into Legends and Zari. Bronze Tiger and Dig are going to start whatever the organization Connor Hawk works for in the future. Uh, And uh, I'm expecting we will see Oliver finding a super team, which will be different versions of the team from different Earths. Like Green Lantern, John Stewart, a girl can dream. Um, yeah, that that that's that. All of that actually to, makes makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I could definitely see all of that. Would is that what you would like to watch? I mean, would that be something that you'd be like, yeah, bring it? Well, I mean, I I actually don't know how much that we're going to be getting in Star City. Um, you know, I I wouldn't be surprised if it's just Oliver and the Monitor. Um, but yeah, I, I may be wrong. Um, the idea of, of him finding, you know, alternate universe versions of his friends and, and us getting to see a John Stewart Green Lantern, uh, I, I, I would be totally down for that. You know, literally now the only thing I'm going to accept for this final season is Oliver meeting alt earth versions of everybody. That's all I want now. Yeah. I mean, it's basically like, like it could be like legends, except it's instead of time travel, it's alternate dimensions. Okay. The, they, I'm into it. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would be, you know, and it, and you have the monitor instead of rip hunter, um, which would be totally cool. Um, They're not, they're just going to give us star city flash forwards again. You know, this is what's <laughs> going to happen, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Um, yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> I, 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 oh, but, I think, uh, yeah, did I really like the bronze tiger stuff? I uh, seeing him come back. I did joining. too. Mm-hmm. I did too. I, he never made an impression on me in his early stuff when he was introduced, but this season I've really enjoyed him kind of as, as an adult in the room, which is silly to say, cause they're all adults, but I, I just, I like that sort of more seasoned weathered voice of experience like don't do this do this <laughs> so he was good um and of course the heart of it all is you know getting to see oliver and felicity's life together and and then as parents and it was just my heart was very very full <laughs> with all of that ending stuff uh and and then it just i feel like it just kept hitting me in the gut you know we see his grave we see oliver saying goodbye to his daughter uh we see him saying goodbye to felicity i'm pretty sure that was really stephen amell like stephen amell crying in that scene and not oliver queen i think that was really saying goodbye to somebody that he's acted opposite and really enjoyed acting opposite for a long time so that was uh, all of it was just gorgeous and everything i would have wanted if it has to end then that is how i wanted it to go down i think (laughs) i mean i wanted them to grow old together obviously but so oliver not dead in a different earth felicity's going to join him that yay happy ending what do you think yeah yeah i i mean i mean i don't know we still we still got the crisis to handle um but i wouldn't i would not be surprised if someone was really hardcore elicity Um, if they stopped watching now and I would not be surprised if they would feel satisfied with that, if they just treat, if they just treat this as the last episode of Arrow. 
And I think based on my timeline, I think that's what a lot of people are going to do. And I totally get that. That is such a, I mean, not satisfying. I hate any time that people who love each other that much miss out on 20 years and Oliver misses out on his daughter's life. And that's obviously heartbreaking, but it was a most satisfying to, to see Felicity make that decision and say, take me to him. You know, that was, I'm getting a little verklempt just thinking about it. That's a, that's a great way to end things. So uh, if you walk away at that point, I'd say keep track of, of social media and see if uh, there may be things that reference that or things that would be satisfying to come back and watch. But if, boy, if that was your last episode, I respect that. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> but we will be watching. Yeah, we will watch and dissect every minute. So you can just tune into us too. We'll keep you up to date. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, was there any any news for Arrow? Um. Uh, yeah. J- tiny, tiny little thing. Uh, we had the upfronts this past week, so the networks all trotted out their plans for the fall. And next season, Arrow is going to have ten episodes plus a retrospective. The retrospective is the new news there. I didn't know they were going to do that, but it makes sense. I mean, Arrow premiered, and the whole world, the whole world. Way to elaborate there. <laughs> uh, the whole world said, "Oh, this is." better this is good (laughs) so to talk about how it kind of sparked the renaissance of of tv superheroes i'm guessing is what that's going to be about so yeah uh 10 ups plus a retrospective yeah 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 my my i I think they did that with big bang this week and my parents were all gushing over that um so you know i mean that arrow is a significant enough show that it gets that with its finale that they pair it with a retrospective i think that's really cool I will. I think the only th- retrospective that's going to top that will be whatever they do for Supernatural, the CW. I'm talking here. Mm. So the Arrow retrospective will be good. The Supernatural retrospective will be possibly all month long in its final month. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, you, you you ready to march on? Yes. In fact, we could say we could zoom on. Yes, zoom on too. I'm sorry. <laughs> The Flash Season 5 Finale Legacy Cisco revealed his powers to Camilla and began to yearn for the simple life. Team Flash tried to keep Cicada 2 busy long enough for Nora to persuade young Grace to take the Metacure. Barry, Nora, and company raced to 2049 in an effort to stop Thawne from escaping prison. Last minute reveal... Gideon showed the date on the Red Skies headline change from 2024 to 2019. Okay. <laughs> I I forgot as I'm looking at my my uh, notes that I r- responded in a flash Everything is a question. I forgot. <laughs> Why is dead Uncle Oren talking even slower as a ghost? Cisco's still dating her? Would vibing a cup of coffee make it cold? Why does Swiss Ash look so much like Swiss Swish Ass? I, it was on the screen and I didn't read it right. Why can't Cecile be mean and truthful all the time? Is informed consent a super big part of their funding? <laughs> That's what I really want to talk about. Do not get informed consent. Just shoot her full of the cure. Oh, my God. Say things about that, Ed. Why did I spend an hour rooting for our heroes to kill a child? Why are you doing this to me, Flash? Yeah, it's just, you know, when that lawsuit comes around, it's not good PR. It's just not good. (laughs) You don't want to have to deal with those optics. All right. (laughs) That's why we have cover ups. (laughs) <laughs> big corporations cover stuff up all the time i'm not saying it's okay but i am saying they know in their you know i'm i think i just became an evil pr person i'm gonna back away from this <laughs> <sighs> but yeah 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 it was it was weird because i mean you had a lot to do but it was pretty much first half they beat cicada second half they take on thawne and they, i say take on because they don't really defeat him um I have some questions about that, too. (laughs) Do all executions go like that? Why did Reverse Flash end up in a Star Trek uniform? Why am I always more attracted to actors playing villains? Why is Tom Cavanaugh wearing eyeliner? Has he always had such blue eyes? (laughs) I had had to work through a journey there. Why are the Allens so easy to manipulate? Uh, Did they just hit Reverse Flash with a snow globe? (laughs) Should I feel worse about Nora? Because I really didn't. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. 
Sorry. <laughs> um, it was it was a well done scene. I mean, it was it was really well done. Yeah, yeah. My guess is with Reverse Flash, that was the only way that they knew how to execute him. So I'm sure that that's probably not typical. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Star Trek uniform. Did you think that too? A little bit. Now, not 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 at the time, but now that you mention it, yeah, I could I could see why you'd think that. Um, <laughs> Next gen, of course. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but uh but yeah 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 and um yeah and i i thought this was really interesting because thon is still a bad guy he still wants to take everybody on but he does have that affection for nora um and you know you had that i i thought it was tragic you know when Barry's like, okay, we've got to save you, so we're gonna run through the negative force. And then Nora's just like, no, I don't, I don't want to think that, I don't want to be that person. Um, you know, yeah. and just watching her, and we've seen that a lot over the last couple of weeks, just people just like, you know, crumbling into a million pieces while they say goodbye. Um, what are you doing to us, pop culture? <laughs> it's been a hard month. <laughs> Yes, it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we had the same thing on Doom Patrol last week, but uh, but yeah, yeah. That was. And I mean, then there's the Marvel verse, of course, of <laughs> course. Um, um, I have more questions. Why is Cisco the way that he is? How did we let Sing fly under the radar as a smart person? He knew who Barry was. He knew who Barry was all along. How cool is Captain Joe West? Uh, and Ed, 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 Dearborn. Yes. Was that Sue Dearborn? Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So <laughs> I, I I did not catch this when it aired. Um, I I watched this at like. I'm sorry. Did your did your podcast co-host tweet at you and did it make you curious? Yeah. <laughs> I caught this at like <laughs> one in the morning and I was so excited. And then I had to fall asleep to go to work and I did not have time to tweet out. <laughs> um, and then I got called on it the next day. Um but the first thing I did was go to our DC TV report feed to be like, what did Ed say? What did Ed say? And then I was like, oh, Ed didn't say anything. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> so I knew when he handed that file to Ralph that it was going to be something maybe significant. Mm -hmm. And then it just said Dearborn. And of course, I don't know what Sue's maiden name is. So with trepidation and hope in my heart, I Googled Sue Dearborn and I was richly rewarded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Ralph, Ralph is gonna meet Sue. Um, and Ralph had a tough time this episode. Uh, I, you know, he's. Yeah. <laughs> I, actually, my first question on my stupid question list was reverse Ralph. <laughs> <It's kind> of... <laughs> I thought that was a really cool effect, but I was scared for him. It was. <laughs> yeah, and I love how oh they just needed the commercial break to reset his speech. Like that thing wasn't happening the whole episode. Um. <laughs> That his speech patterns just went back to normal on their own, uh, <laughs> which is fine. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're we're gonna get Sue. We're gonna get Sue. I can't wait. I can't so wait. stay tuned this summer for the only piece of news either of us cares about. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be announced at some point, and you'll hear it here second. You'll hear it from like EW first. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, and yeah, yeah, Cisco. So is he leaving the show? Is he, or is he just going to like, I'm going to stick around just not have powers or. Uh, there has been no announcement about him leaving the show. And I feel like if he was, they would have, there would have been, we don't really have any flash news this week. And I, I feel like if that was it, they would have announced it at this point. Mm -hmm. So from what I understand, he's staying, it just kind of became a thing that people started talking about, but that actually is not what's mm -hmm. planned for him. So yeah. I, why, why would you get rid of superpowers? I just don't understand that choice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand. It's weird. And like, but like the music they gave him when he's walking out, that feels like, oh, this character's done. But yeah, I, I, I'm just very confused with that. Um, You know? Yeah. Like I said, as far as I know, he's, he's still going to be there. So maybe he'll have buyer's remorse, you know, maybe that's what next season is. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, or maybe Gypsy finally comes back and then he's like, oh, but uh, 
All right. All right. So uh, we defeated Cicada 2. Um, uh, reverse Flash got away. Uh, we don't know what's happening to Nora. Um, although, oh, man. Now now I got, because we, we got that crisis. Uh, we got that crisis thing. And uh, now I'm wondering, like, um, if they're able to stop the crisis and Barry survives, is that going to bring Nora back? Is is that huh. going to be like a moment that we have in the episode where we're like, you know, uh, they they do enough to bring it so Nora can be punched back into existence? <laughs> you know, I guess I said we didn't have much flash news. I will say that the Allens reacting to the crisis and the moving up the timeline and things that apparently is going to be a big part of this upcoming season uh, is how they're going to, obviously you have to ramp up to the, I'm guessing all of the CW shows that are airing then are going to ramp up to that crisis, except for maybe black lightning that seems to not play mm -hmm. with that. Anyway. So mm -hmm. flash. Yay. Yay. All right. All right. Is it time to move on? Uh, <laughs> yes. As with every episode this week, <laughs> it's time to move on. <laughs> all right. Next up. I zombie. Uh Season 5, Episode 3, 5, 6, 7, 8. Liv made Pico de Gallo out of the brains of two dancers who were poisoned while training for a reality show. Clive and Dale ran into a pregnant Michelle at their Lamaze class and wondered who the father might be. Peyton and Major clashed after an incident involving Fillmore Grave Soldiers at a school. Last minute reveal, after being brought to Renegade's Haven, Jordan's brothers made friends with Oliver and Annie. I, was this episode 60% dancing? It was a lot of dancing. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, but it felt like a weird way to use one of your last episodes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, at Deke273, our buddy Dan from the Deconstructing Dad podcast uh, tweeted out he can't wait to hear Sarah gush gushing over the dance sequence in the morgue on this week's I Zombie, uh, and he wants to know if I will too. And yeah, I thought that was really cool. Now, um, <laughs> did you recognize the direct and obvious homages to Dirty Dancing? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I wasn't yes. sure what your training <laughs> as a, a man growing up in America was in Dirty Dancing. I would like to propose uh, a, a modest a modest proposal, if you will. Uh, mute it. Mute that whole sequence and turn on Hungry Eyes and just watch it that way. <laughs> just once. Just for fun. It is deeply rewarding. <laughs> it was so good. And of course, Clive is a good day. Of course, Clive comes in and is just like, I got this. Ah, it was so great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that yeah that whole montage and it was it was a long montage that's what i'm they, saying it was so much more really, dancing than i expected <laughs> <laughs> they really drug it out but uh but yeah 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 i i, I don't understand why ravi was so nervous um but <laughs> well i couldn't understand why they didn't just feed him the other brain i guess he only can eat brains during his time of the month and i guess that wasn't it is that how his deal works Yes, yes. Also, the the I I liked the idea that the vision from one brain told Liv to made Liv think that she had to eat the other. I thought that was really cool. Um, I thought yeah. that was a. <laughs> and I also I found her on Dancer Brain to be delightful, and it never fails to freak me out how different Rose McIver looks in literally any hair color. Like you, you take her out of the eye zombie white. And she just looks like a whole different person to me. It's it's incredible. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she she went she went she went redhead this week. Um, it was a good look. Different. Well, she had to be ginger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I I loved I loved how the the hair matched the dress. Uh huh. I, I thought that I thought that that was really interesting. Um, <laughs> Uh, and we we got to know a whole different world in the in the world of of competitive dancing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all all the interactions they had, Lars and Tina. Um, uh, but uh, the one thing we did not find out is who actually poisoned them. You know what? 
I didn't even notice that. Did we not solve the? Was I just too into the dancing to realize that? Well, they found they found the one guy who was on the water polo team, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, who who basically said that he he wanted Nancy out of the way, and then he drank po- and then he drank poison and died. So I don't know if like he was committing suicide. I don't know. That was not clear to me. Well, seriously, as you mention it now, it's not clear to me either. Huh. This is so, I don't know so this is I, what happens when you give me splashy dance numbers that ends with Ravi uh flossing. I just mm-hmm. don't worry about anything else and I just enjoy that. So yeah. this I hope you're happy, I zombie. <laughs> yeah, so maybe I should watch that scene again or someone else just tell me, "No, no, 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 he admitted killing them and then and then killed himself." But it no, was No, he awkward. didn't admit killing them. He was he no, seemed he, really surprised. No, no. I mean, he said he wanted Nancy out of the way, but he didn't outright say I poisoned them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Well, um, most importantly, Ed, did you, did you recognize the song Poison by Belle Biv DeVoe the second time this song has come up on this podcast in two weeks? <laughs> yes, I recognize the song. All those, okay. I recognize the song. I have no idea who sings them, but I, I recognize the song. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you make me feel like a wizened crone. Ah, yes, Belle Biv DeVoe took the world by storm in 1993. I don't know. <sighs> Gather round, children, while I tell you the story of how a Midwestern American white woman started to realize, oh, okay, I'm, just, I'm done. Uh, <laughs> I, I loved Proud Dad Clive filming them. <laughs> While they were dancing, <laughs> he was so excited, <laughs> and I liked I liked Dale being so kind to possible baby mama, but we don't really know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was rough. That was rough. Dale was taking that really hard. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, do you, oh here here's the thing. Do you think Clive was intentionally late to see if Dale would help Michelle? Oh, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't even think about that. Um, no, no, that's not how Clive operates, is it? I feel like he's no, more straightforward no, than really. that. But that is, I mean, that's mm-hmm. an interesting, that is an interesting thing to think about. Huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it, uh, yeah. I, and I thought, I thought that was a nice moment. Um, you know, and, and. I would expect a Lamaze teacher to be a jerk like that. You know, you really should find your own partner. Oh, still here alone? Mm, yeah. I mean, you really need... Oh, my God. I, I actually think that probably somebody in that position would be a little more sensitive. Good grief. You, you would think that. You would think But that. I bet all the good ones evacuated from Seattle, so... Mm. <laughs> all right. And, uh, oh, oh, oh. Major and versus Peyton this week. I love that storyline. Yes. Uh, I love the way it, it, it really lets you into the, like the political dynamics that are going on. Um, you know, all, all of the stuff that it's dealing with. Uh, I, I love how Peyton sniffed out what the, what the principal was doing. Um, you know, and, and, you know, basically admitting, you know, the, that she was wrong. Um, and, uh, you know, I was worried what was going to happen to Jordan's brothers, um, you know, and I'm kind of surprised that Major didn't go looking for them right away, um, but that that they connected with that. I thought everything about that storyline, also just the character dynamics and seeing them clash and and how they work together. And I, I just I loved all of that. Well, and yet again, it's one of those where they both have a good point. I mean, I feel like we're going to see this Major is is saying and doing things that aren't popular but they're not wrong and Peyton also is not I I mean I think she's doing her best but I I like that there is you know I talk about this sometimes with Supergirl you can see the seeds of where it comes from even if you might not agree with it I I like this too that there is no clear oh well no that's not the right thing they're not making them dumb they're making them smart and making hard choices and I'm really enjoying that yes yes Yes, I concur. I concur. <laughs> Do you concur, sir? <laughs> yes, I concur. Um, <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, was there anything anything more you want to talk about uh, with the episode? Nope. 
nope, nope, nope. Just uh, thank you. Thank you for all the dancing mm-hmm. show. That was, was delightful. Cool. And no news this week, right? Nope, correct. Mm-hmm. All right. Our final episode for this week, Doom Patrol, season one penultimate episode, penultimate patrol. Vic sat by his father in the hospital and learned the truth about his accident. With Flex Mentello's help, our heroes entered the white space to rescue the chief from Mr. Nobody. Last minute reveal, the chief told our heroes that their tragedies were not accidents and that he was responsible. So Timothy Dalton seems to be back. Yes. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> T-Dalt was back. T-Dalt is back. And uh, what a revelation. Like, yeah. wow. Wow. Well, and I, I love that we have built up all season long this sort of family of misfits. And we've unpeeled the layers of their backstories and their tragedies. And then we put them in a position where they could undo it all. And they didn't. It was amazing. It was just such a great temptation right there. And all of them said, no, I'm better for this. Or, you know, I'm, it's important that I do this. Oh, so good. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Also, trading Cyborg for Flex, that's a good bargain. <laughs> yeah. Put, put, put Cyborg with his dad and let Flex go with the team. It just works, doesn't it? I think it did work. I think it did work. Um, uh, speaking of flex, our buddy at Bauer Fett tweeted out, uh, Sarah, I'm sorry to report. I do not have that flex power. <laughs> um, maybe Lucifer does. A hundred percent. Can't oh, confirm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Lucifer can. <laughs> yeah, I have some questions about flex's power. Um, is that in the comics? <laughs> oh <laughs> uh, yeah yeah i mean prob- prob- <laughs> uh, the whole the whole idea is that basically if he flexes the right muscle he can pretty much do anything um and then he means to send them into the white space but accidentally gives everyone on the street an orgasm uh, except for Cliff. Oh, sad. But <laughs> Cliff, Cl- poor Cliff, poor Cliff faked it. He didn't want to be left out. <laughs> and then for Jane to call him on it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe there'd be some kind of like, well, you know, arousal's all in your head, right? It's in your brain. But no, they just he was just like, I didn't want to. Be- <laughs> um, I did super enjoy the thought of the actors being like, let me find the essential truth to my character. How would she <laughs> react? Because I felt like Jane, uh-huh, uh-huh. Rita, 100%. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so good. No, um, no, and I was the, glad to see the, Danny again. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, no. The best reaction in that scene has to be Beard Hunter. That... <laughs> Did he find the best beard on Danny the street and just sidle right up to him? <laughs> that man, he lived that. You could tell. <laughs> <laughs> that was not acting. That was being. All right. He <laughs> felt that moment. <laughs> but <laughs> Oh man. Uh, but yeah, we got Danny back. It was great to see Danny. Um, and, and it I was nice Danny to see you. S- sincerely being like, I am so sorry about your wife, Flex. That was really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, it was nice to see Larry happy to see somebody for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Ordinarily, it's like, oh, God, here's somebody terrible from my past. <laughs> <laughs> you know just to see him like like you know i mean we can't see his face but i felt like there was a smile on it for once um it was <laughs> it, was, it was implied in the voice <laughs> yeah 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 it's just you know a little bit of a positivity from larry goes a long way um but yeah yeah um and, uh, uh, you know, they finally enter the white space and, um, you know, I, that 
that whole sense where, you know, nobody offers them that, okay, I could keep you locked in this memory and you could live your lives out as if your accidents never happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I, just well done. I, I also, um, I, 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 they got me, honestly, they got me with that. Uh, Mr. Nobody's dead. I, I was like, Oh, that, this feels like the kind of show that would take the villain they've been building up all season long and dispatch him like that. I mean, this felt like a show where they'd, it's kind of like a, a Joss Whedon thing where you expect this to be this big and then it's just like, no, he's done. So I, I bought it. I thought that was a twist. It was kind of like, oh, they kind of Night Kinged this Game of Thrones reference. Uh, and then I slowly realized, oh, wait, no, <laughs> that big robot. That's not, did they not fool you for a second with that? I mean, the second, the second well i didn't know it was going to be that but the second the time loop started first off when they started the whole thing where like like where he comes down for breakfast and like uh rita's in that uniform and she's she's already in costume like this seems a little too neat Mm -hmm. um well you know what else she was knitting with gloves on nobody i'm a knitter nobody's knitting (laughs) with gloves on so that's how you knew but continue but yeah yeah and then the time loop started and you're like oh no no this is this has nobody written all over it <laughs> um <laughs> but uh yeah 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 and um got to learn a little bit more about mr nobody um <laughs> that flashback to to 46 uh when millie dumped him. um and she said that was you're a nobody mm. well <laughs> Yeah. I did kind of like the Doom Patrol all bullying him. No, you really are nobody. You're garbage. You're nothing. I was like, whoa, are we are we going back to high school? Like this everybody's high school experienced. Well, I, yeah, I, I don't really think it was that. I think it was more like, oh, you're basic. Oh, you're you're just like us. Like, <laughs> like, no, no, seriously, let's go back to the manor and like Niles could probably help you. Um <laughs> Yeah, no, it was good. Mm-hmm. I, I I continue to be completely enraptured with this show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, Vic, uh, Silas coming clean and and telling, admitting to Vic that he engineered some of his memories, um, and that you know it wasn't programming; it was just he told them the same story over and over again and subconsciously Vic just believed that was the truth which I think is how it works isn't it <laughs> with memory a lot of times yeah 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 it was that was that was that was some really heartbreaking father-son moments yeah um also mm-hmm. kudos to the makeup artist who did um his eye his his battered eye because it looked really bad but also it's the same eye that his son has cyborged so i thought that symmetry was nice Mm, yes 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 so uh moving forward um so niles just dropped a bombshell uh is the doom patrol going to be able to recover from that and and do you think they're going to be able to to defeat mr nobody are they gonna just fall in line and take it out on on niles i I think that they will struggle with it, but by the end of the hour, they will be back on, on the chief side. Don't you? Yeah. 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 I think that's, that's probably, or maybe we end the season with them all going their separate ways. I could see that too. Maybe I just think next. more importantly, mm-hmm. Oh no, you, you're going to make an actual point. I'm going to make a dumb point. Mm-hmm. So you make your actual point. Yeah. I just think next episode is going to be rough. I think it's going to be rough. I think we're going to find out exactly how he engineered all of those accidents. Um. Oh, yeah, you're preparing me for this. Got it. Mm-hmm. Got it. You're managing my expectations. I just want to know if we're going to end the season without seeing their amazing like game room hangout pinball area because mm. I've been waiting for that one that we saw in Titans and we just haven't spent any time there and I'm very disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. What happened to that set? That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um. Uh. All right. Uh. So yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, was there any news for Doom Patrol? Uh. Nope. Nope. Just uh. Mm-hmm. Just rolling along on the season. All right. On to news for other shows. 
Okay, so we have uh, some bigger CW news uh, because of the upfronts. Like we said earlier in the episode, uh, the networks have all talked about what's going to air when. So here is the fall lineup for our favorite uh, CW shows. Sunday, we have Batwoman followed by Supergirl for your girl night, girl power night. Monday, uh, we have Black Lightning airing in the second slot. All American airs first. So that's going to be, as <laughs> Ed put it, we were talking about it. Your black Lee night, right? Like your black guy night. Um, <laughs> Tuesday, you've got Flash and Arrow, so white guy night, and then <laughs> Legends coming at the mid season. <laughs> so, I mean, they really. It is interesting to me how they really segmented those. Here's your ladies. Here's your people of color. Here's your white fellas. <laughs> yeah, the world. And then Thursday, I think, is just. It's also ladies' night because that's when Supernatural's on. Heyo. Yeah, yeah. You know. And then I think Friday you've got Charmed and Dynasty. Um, and that's the shruggy emoji night. <laughs> <laughs> and I've forgotten what Wednesday is. Um, what else is airing on the CW right now? Mm-hmm. Uh, Wednesday is question mark night. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can definitely see. It feels like mm-hmm. the most simplistic programming choices they could mm-hmm. possibly make. But yeah. maybe it'll work for them. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Riverdale and Nancy Drew. That's the Wednesday night. Ah, bastardization of comic books night. Got it. <laughs> Or ask my husband how he feels about Riverdale sometime. <sighs> oh, yeah. Well, classic 50s 50s heroes uh supernatural detective stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the Nancy tr- the Nancy Drew trailer drew my drew my interest. I thought that 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 I'll I, watch an episode. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably watch all the episodes. It's the CW. Who am I kidding? <laughs> but uh but okay, so we've we've got a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday lineup. Um Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're going to pack it all in the beginning of the week. Uh, and then, of course, Legends will come in the uh, mid-season. Mm-hmm. And to kind of go along with that, we also know when the Crisis episodes are going to air. It's a five-night event. It's going to air for three nights in December of 2019 and two nights in January of 2020. Which I don't see them airing on the, the 29th, 30th, 31st, and then the 1st, 2nd. That doesn't feel right to me. So I think we're going to get a break in between them. I kind of hate that idea, but Ed, you seemed a little more open to it. Uh, Yeah, yeah. I think, well, I I think when, with, with It's a Crisis this big, um, yeah, I think it, it does kind of make sense for them to spread it out. I mean... To, to, to try to do five episodes in a week. Um, you know, also, if you want to make the Legends a part of it and Legends aren't part of the full lineup, it wouldn't make sense, you know, that maybe Legends premiere is going to be part of that. Um, I will be curious if the Legends are involved because they weren't last time, but this feels like a bigger, I mean, every crossover is big, but this feels so huge. I wonder yeah. if they will. Yeah, yeah. I mean, also, like, I, I guess you can you can kind of spread it out so that, Maybe you have, I don't know, because well, also it's five shows, so five episodes, because um, Black Lightning isn't isn't part of it. Uh, and also, I'm wondering, like, is Arrow going to be in the December portion, or is it going to be in the January portion? Like, is Arrow going to hold off on its last episode until January? Um, or all good questions. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I I don't know. Um, I am excited, though. I I mean, I feel like they have been building up to this and weaving storylines in. And I'm guessing next season is going to be even more direct. I'm also curious how much Supergirl is going to be involved. Um, I wonder if Supergirl is going to talk about the events of the crossover last season in its finale on Sunday. Because that often has been a show that's a little more removed from the crossovers. So I, I am eager to find out how they're going, how much they're going to weave this into the DNA of the shows in this new season as they lead up to it. I'm guessing quite a bit. Uh, it's it's ambitious. Thinking about tying all of this together in these disparate shows with different writing staffs, it, it's impressive. So hats off to you, CW. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. It's exciting. Now, I, I think I know what the next bit of news is. What's the next show? Do-do-do. It would be batwoman batwoman music we got a trailer we got a trailer yes it looks so good uh, i mean we're we're gonna watch this no matter what but even if we weren't watching it for the podcast would you be there opening night with like a batwoman t-shirt on like are you this level of excited i'm excited 
I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it seems like the it it seems like the background is staying true to the comics. You know, the whole she was in the army. Her dad is running this. Uh, you know, she's he's running this uh, outside military contractors firm. Um, uh, but they add the extra angle is that she shows up in a Gotham where Batman has left. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and and she finds out Bruce's secret by just kind of like wandering into his office and and <laughs> <laughs> you know unlocking the Batcave. Uh, you know, and you know, it's, as it's, you do, yes, yeah. It's with all of these first looks. Uh, you know, when, whenever the upfront shows, they drop these like three or four minute trailers that are pretty much the pilot condensed down to three minutes, um, which is fine. You know, uh, you know, so we we definitely got a feel of what that first what that pilot is going to be like. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we got a good sense of the characters. Um, but the thing that really struck me is I was finding a lot of parallels between. Between this pilot, between Batwoman and. And season one of Supergirl. And that when you said that, that surprised me because I guess I was looking at it more visually and visually they couldn't be more opposite. So what was it about it that reminded you of that? Well, I mean, just from from the storyline, it's, you know, she shows up um, in her cousin's town, uh, you know, not not intending to be a hero. Um, You have. Uh, her father is basically like, um, like Alex in the fact that she is a family member who does something with the military, you know, but, but something related, um, that she doesn't, you don't know if she's going to be working for or against. Um, and, uh, I mean, you, you have, you have a a bad guy, Alice, I thought seemed like an interesting bad guy, but Mm -hmm. also Luke Fox, uh, Lucius Fox's son is pretty much her win. And it seems like they've combined win and James Olsen, uh, into one character of Luke. Uh, I hope Luke is more successful. (laughs) Yeah. Which I think is going to work much better. Um, (laughs) And uh, and this this might be a spoiler, uh, but in the comics, Luke Fox eventually becomes Batwing, um, uh, who at one point was the Batman of Africa. Um, but it looks like a much more badass version of James Olsen's Guardian costume. So um, yeah. th- that's something to keep your eye out in like season two or three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I did, I did thought it, 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 it opened everything up. Uh, I like how she starts out just in the bat suit. Uh, and you see, she's probably going to, to bring out the red hair later on, um, that people initially think that she's just Batman come back. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. I, I like it. Alice, uh, of, of the Wonderland gang feels like a very cool villain. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, and I'm I'm curious to see if if that's going to be a one and done, or is she going to be a recurring character throughout the? Or is she their Damien Dark, if you will? Yeah, 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 (laughs) Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, um, Batwoman, very exciting. This was the most obvious pilot order of the fall, as far as I'm concerned, but I'm glad we're getting it. we are on a super roll with uh, trailers, so let's move on to Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing. Okay. We have a trailer for that. Mm. Uh, I watched it. It is dark and sciencey and swampy. Ed, what did you think? <laughs> oh, I'm. I feel very. Man, I I feel very bad saying this, but. I did not have a great feeling coming out of this trailer and I don't know why. Really? I, 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 w- I went in interested and I came out still interested. What, yeah. where did it lose you? I mean, we're st- I'm still going to watch it, but it, you know, it's nothing to do. It's nothing to do. I don't know if I just expected more effects or just some, something about the, and it's, it, it's a completely aesthetic thing or maybe it was just the editing that there was a lot of really fast editing and the dialogue that we were getting, for some reason, it felt a little clunky to me. 
but like some of the shots, it just, it felt, it felt a little amateurish and I don't know why I got that feeling off of it, you know, cause it's obvious cause you know, it's obvious we got James Wan involved in this. So it, 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 you know, but something about it just, it felt off. It felt, it didn't feel like a streaming show. It felt a little bit like a high end web series. And there's a big gap between those things. And I hope huh. I'm wrong. Huh. This is, sir, this is shocking. <laughs> I did not expect this from you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I hope I'm wrong. But just something about it felt off to me. I, I don't know. felt like I am going to watch it with a husband who grumbles about how dark it is for the entire show. And I'm going to want to smother him with a pillow. That was my only thought was, oh, he's going to complain about all the like blue filter and the dark. and the, uh. um, That was my only thing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm into it. I it was <sighs> kind of hard to tell. They didn't it was I don't know. What am I looking for here? It was kind of what I expect, like Virginia Madsen looking out the window and lots of screaming and jump scares. And it's giving you the atmosphere. But uh yeah, I'm still yeah, excited and, for the premiere. I'm I'm still optimistic. Yeah, and uh, you know the actor playing Alec Holland didn't really jump out at me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It didn't. It I did. I didn't feel like charisma or gravitas coming from that guy. Like I remember when the casting was announced, being surprised that that was the show's lead. But then I don't know how much. I mean, how much is he going to be in the show? Probably, if he's going to become the swamp thing yeah yeah but i mean you know let, let, let's put it this way he's he he doesn't have the same kind of dynamic that um brendan fraser or matt bomer has who are who are doing similar for sure mm-hmm. for sure so yeah that that's a good way i mean I, I think when you do stack it up next to the the acting talent they got for doom patrol i should say acting talent but the the level of the actors the well-knownness of the actors you do have a a slightly less well-known male lead and crystal reed as much as i love her i understand the the teen wolf fandom is not super big Mm -hmm. i'm excited about it because i know what kind of work she did on that show but you do have a slightly maybe less although virginia madsen has an oscar doesn't she so i should i'm gonna stop this line (laughs) of conversation I, the, it'll be great. It'll be great. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. I, I will say, I hope I'm wrong, and I, I, so I will be going in optimistic, <laughs> wanting to like this. So, um, yeah. I mean, I you've you've heard me shout about give me all your gothic romance horror mm-hmm. before. So as long as they follow through on that, I should be good. Yeah. All right. But uh, yeah. Next up, all right. Coolio. Uh, next up, we have uh, Lucifer. So there's a ton of, of, of news out there just about, you know, interviews with the cast and what does this mean and what does that mean? The most important news I have for you is that there is no news about a season five yet. Mm. Uh, but there was a cool interview that uh, D.B. Woodside, who plays Amenadale, uh, did with EW talking about how significant it was to to do that episode that tackled race so head on. And it was kind of what we talked about in our podcast, if I may. Ooh, we talked mm-hmm. about. But, you know, how, how you're looking at that through the eyes of a celestial being and not somebody who grew up here and, and how significant that was to tell that story and how responsible he felt for it as the only, uh, you know, black man of color uh, you know uh, in the cast that he really wanted to make sure that that was done well so it was it was it was an interesting interview it's at ew.com there's a ton of lucifer news just not the news we're all hoping for mm. which is the next season <laughs> that's okay um that's okay you know i mean you know these things take time these things take time so we'll see we'll see i'm not losing hope um <laughs> uh so while we're on lucifer we did get some good tweets um thanks everyone for again for listening that week uh last week uh this past week uh to our lucifer season four special um back to that episode uh that you were talking about with Amenadiel. deal uh bauer at bauer Fett, uh says he wants a spinoff where lucy and Amenadiel drive around and throw down with gang members that scene starting before uh uh, before the ill drive is a f- series favorite. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> uh, also, uh, 
at Volta1228 says, thanks for the, for this fun. Listen, this was such a tight character driven season. Love that there was more focus on the supernatural as well. And we got more powerful devil. I'm really, really hoping for a season five. There is so much more this story could explore. Yep. From your lips to dad's ears. Yep. And uh, at Deke273, oh, I totally agree, Sarah, that the Luc- that Lucifer has lost a step, especially in the music department. Poison by BBD was perfect. <laughs> Sorry that Ed doesn't follow music like you don't follow sports. <laughs> and the funny thing is, I don't follow music at all. I just <laughs> am older than Ed. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I have more years of, of accumulated music. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that the Lucifer always has good music, but I thought this past season was quite good. So. <laughs> but no, I don't follow sports. In fact, just yesterday I was at a, a party and I don't know, sports came up and I was like, yeah, it's like on my podcast when I start talking about music and I just, or sports and I just drift up out of my body. And... Yeah. It's okay. You could hang. There's a. I, I promise you. I promise you. <laughs> well, Thing with Ta- sports. <laughs> Tanya Melendez, Melendez swears if she just if I give her a weekend, she'll teach me baseball and she'll make me love baseball. If I just give her some dedicated time, she swears that will happen. See the secret. It's all. All of these things. It there is a narrative, and once you hook into that narrative, it's really fun to follow. I, I promise you, sports and. And superheroes are not that different. <laughs> Just saying. this, uh huh. Okay. Um, <laughs> I guess they both wear costumes. They're often tight. Yep. So you know, there's that. There. Mm-hmm. I will say when I I worked for the Associated Press for a time, and they they make you do a, a test to make sure you're you know worthy, and uh, they give you facts and make you write a news story, and they gave me a set of facts for a sports story, and I looked at the guy administering it with such fear, panic, and hopelessness in my eyes, he took pity on me and said, just find the hero. (laughs) So, I mean, I see what you're saying. (laughs) And I didn't. I got the job. So, I don't think it was good. But (laughs) All right. All right. (laughs) That was quite a digression (laughs) after Lucifer. Uh, Next up, we have Preacher. Uh, We have a couple of pictures from the upcoming final season of the show. It's our main characters sort of posed artfully to give us a taste of what's going on. Uh, If you're a comic reader, I think probably the most revealing one is Cass. Uh, It shows him surrounded by, I mean, that looked like bloody feathers, right, Ed? Yes. Yes, it does. So it looked like he'd been feasting on some chickens in in kind of a um, cell. Yeah. I was going to say, I think he's at the bottom of a well or something like that. There's a lot of like... But uh, if uh, if you've read the comics, you you maybe are super freaking excited about that. I don't know. <laughs> I was. Uh, and the rest of them, Tulip just looks mad and Jesse also looks mad. So it's very on point for the characters that we know. Yeah, yeah. They all look like they're in rough places. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Again, very on point. <laughs> uh, and then the last bit of news we have this week is actually a mea culpa. Watchmen. Watchmen. This was news from last week, and I just completely blew past it in my notes. This was all me. This was not Ed. But we had a trailer drop for Watchmen last week, and our friend Dan wisely pointed out, "Hey, uh." Hey guys, did you did you miss something? Yeah, we did. That was me. I am so sorry. Yeah, yeah. his he, but yeah, he actually said, but 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 you guys didn't even discuss this little piece of loveliness that dropped last Sunday night. S- to say I'm a little disappointed in Ed and Sarah may be an understatement. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I honestly, blame Lucifer. I I had done so much writing and talking about it at that point. I just my brain was gone. But and I was so excited to talk about the trailer, and I'm still so excited to talk about the trailer. So we finally get a look at kind of what's going on with Watchmen. Uh, it looks like we have a cult of Rorschach. It looks like maybe we have an emergence of of costumed heroes again. It looks like, um, as as Jason said, hey, is that uh? Is that uh, Miami Vice over there? So yeah, we got some Don Johnson. Yeah, yeah, and it looks like he's uh, he's like a, a sheriff or a police chief 
who's leading a police force that uh, is trying to crack down on superheroics um, uh, or prevent it from reoccurring. Um, so, yeah, this is this is it's very strange. It was re- I, I was excited. Um, the thing that that was um, the thing that was most shocking to me was the visual aesthetic. You know, uh, it you didn't see any Snyder filters, you know, mm-hmm. you know, it looked it looked well, uh, it looked natural. You didn't you know, the, the, <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of like blues and grays, you know, a little bit more sunlight. That that's funny. I didn't even think it, to me this this is so divorced from Snyder. I am so full speed ahead on the Lindelof of it all that it it looked Oh, you're going to reach through the microphone and slap me. It looked like the leftovers. Like you you can see that filming aesthetic and it just felt like you've got the 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 Rorschach TikTok squad felt like the guilty remnant. Like you can see the sort of storytelling parallels that maybe drew him to this reinterpretation or reimagining or repackaging or whatever they're calling it. Uh but yeah, I didn't even think about the Zack Snyder of it all, but yeah, let's stay away from that and let's <laughs> stay with natural light and lovely dark shots that, that have, you know, rich interior lighting. And I, I, yeah, let's, I have only seen the Watchmen movie once and that was in theaters. I've watched the opening credits 500 times because they're one of my favorite things ever. And that's it. So I can't even say the Snyder thing mm. is a big part of my brain. It's, it's the comic and it's the opening credits for me. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, it's funny the way I was describing this, it looks like a sequel to the 1990s ver- version of Watchmen that Ridley Scott was supposed to direct that we never got. Um, huh? I guess I hadn't, how did I miss? That would have been interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he huh. was uh, – well, also, Ridley Scott is – he's like Guillermo del Toro. He's one of those directors who always has a dozen different things in development, and most of them never really just pop up to the surface. But he was attached to Watchmen for a long time, and that was something that just languished for like a decade and a half. Um, uh, and huh. then finally, Zack Snyder picked it up and made it. Um, and uh, it sounds like I like that movie more than you do. Um <laughs> oh um yeah but... oh, sorry <laughs> it no, was okay. so it was so faithful <sighs> i don't know i kind of think some of the best comic adaptations are the ones that adapt for screen and i feel like that one didn't i'm just still not over that that owl ship sex scene Ugh. Mm. <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah yeah well and that that's something you know like i'm, I'm excited i'm interested in that you know, like, did the events of Watchmen happen? Was there a giant squid? Um, you know, oh, what's... so you're saying not the... Oh, yeah, well, there's that, too. They changed the ending. Uh, yeah, yeah, What are we going to get squid timeline, or are we going to get whatever they did in the movie timeline? Yeah, yeah. And it, it, I mean, Lindelof is basically saying, you know, giving all indications that he's he's disavowing the movie, that, that he's going straight from the comic. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm excited. I'm excited. This is cool. This is cool. I'm looking forward yeah, to this. Yeah, I I am too. Uh, we were just talking about with Game of Thrones ending in, what, 30 hours from when we're recording? Uh, mm-hmm. Do we cancel HBO Go or do we stay loyal to the channel just to be like, this is this is because you're bringing us Watchmen. You can keep having <laughs> our monthly $15. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you you know you know what I'm waiting. You know, everyone's talking about how Disney is going to bundle Disney Plus and Hulu and ESPN, and like that's going to be the thing that can destroy cable. Um, mm-hmm. I would love because Warner is having their own Warner Media service. What if they bundled that and DC Universe and HBO all into one, and you just I pay kinda, like twenty? Yeah, I kind of wondered about that too. If DC Universe is going to get a bigger streaming bundle treatment that would be interesting um and yeah. this is going to affect the cw shows too a little bit the the superhero shows are on netflix now but uh, they may not it's going to be years before they disappear from what i read yesterday but that could affect that as well i'll be curious mm-hmm. how this all shakes out mostly i think it's interesting that disney now owns the handmaid's tale 
which is about <laughs> the least comfortable bedfellows I can think of, other than literally anybody <laughs> in The Handmaid's Tale. Those are the least comfortable bedfellows, but... Oh. Is, I'm please, sorry. don't make Handmaid's Tale the last thing we talk about this week, Ed. Please change the subject. <laughs> well, uh, that's the news for this week, right? <laughs> yes. This is, this is the longest episode we've ever done. Yes, that is. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, it, it we're 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 coming in, coming into the stretch now for the winners of the week. Um, Do we have the same winner? Probably not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's real straightforward. Is yours? What, who do you want to go? Uh, all right. Uh, I'll go. I'll go first. Um, my winner for the week is Nora West Allen. You're right. We don't. Yes. <laughs> um. Uh, I I thought I thought it was uh she was very brave. I thought she came into her own. Uh, I thought you know she got th- she found a way to get through to Grace. Um. You know, and and you know, there there have been times where like Nora Nora's been kind of annoying or whatever, but I think this episode that she really shined, uh, and I thought she had a great arc, uh, you know, and and torn in that moment where you know, going through the negative speed force, you know, and Barry's like, hey, we're gonna find a way to save you, and her being like, it's not worth it, um, you know, I'm I'm happy for the time I had with you guys, and. Uh, and yeah yeah and seeing her drift off that was really hard to watch and i hope that's not the end for her i hope there's a way that they could find a way to 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 bring her back um even if it's in a different form um i don't know i just i i thought that that really spoke to me yeah i I thought it was really cool you know i was pretty Mm -hmm. cavalier about her fading away in this episode but i guess i always I, I assume they're going to bring her back. I just assume that I, it never occurred to me that they wouldn't. So maybe mm-hmm. that's why I was able to uh, distance myself from those feelings. Also, I still want justice for her friend, Leah. I'd like to see the timeline tinkered with such that Leah comes back. <laughs> justice for Nora and Leah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, my winner of the week is Felicity Megan Smoke, who um, – Left Arrow forever, as far as we know, with a deeply satisfying episode after a deeply satisfying seven seasons. Uh, Emily Bett Record created this incredible, smart, funny, sexy, self-deprecating, awkward, relatable character who, uh, you know, went from cool, smart tech girl to improbable love interest to leading lady to Oliver's half oh just a wonderful character unique distinctive um wicked chemistry so gonna miss her next season um thank you uh, emily bet records and thank you felicity smoke yes yes i say ye emily bet records (laughs) um yeah yeah oh man it's yeah we had two finales and two two big send-offs uh yeah yeah so maybe that was our theme for the week um it was it was tough goodbyes. Um, tough goodbyes. I like it. We did have the same winner of the week. <laughs> oh man! And next next week we got three more of them. Um, man, man, yeah. It's uh, wow, wow. We we're we're wow. Oh, big year, big year. Lots of emotions going on, Sarah. Um. <laughs> Uh, true that yes 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 uh <laughs> also we didn't even talk about the new batman i mean like we we just we could you want to keep going for another 20 30 minutes that's okay <clears throat> that's okay i i feel like everyone's gonna this this every time they cast a batman there's always an initial backlash um you know and and i i say let's not judge anything until we see him in action um oh yeah pattinson will be fine i have no concerns about that my big thing is do we as a country always have to have a designated Batman? It is not the Pope. We do not need. We can go for stretches without a Batman, can't we? Bite your tongue. <laughs> I mean, we did years ago. <laughs> there were times when we didn't have a national Batman, but I feel like there's this rush to always have us have a Joker and a Batman. I don't know what that says about us as a country, but I don't think it's good. You know what? England has James Bond. America has Batman. All right. 
that I don't know what that says about us as a country, but I don't think it's good. <laughs> What? We have a sociopath who covers his face. <laughs> and pre- they have a guy. Well, they have an alcoholic murderer. So yeah, I mean, yeah, and fights crime to a bo- to a bloody pulp. All right, he keeps us safe. <laughs> <laughs> and now our Batman is our, again British. So there's that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, genuinely, I think I think he's an interesting choice. I got I got no beef with that, none whatsoever. I just. I'm just like, really? Another Batman? Right. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, uh, well, thank you, everybody. Um, I think I think that's going to be the DC TV report for this week. That may be more <laughs> than, of the DC TV report than you wanted this week. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You can find us on Twitter. I'm at Edward O'Hare TBD. And I'm at Sarah Netzley, S-A-R-A-N-E-T-Z-L-E-Y. And follow the show on Twitter at DCTV Report. Send along your emails to DCTV at wickedtheory.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to our show on your podcast app of choice and rate and review us. That helps more people find us. Check out our sister shows, the Wicked Theory Podcast and Preacher vs. Preacher. This has been a Wicked Theory Studios production. Executive producer, Bill Sweeney. Visit us at wickedtheory.com. Shazam, everybody. Shazam. Shazam. Shazam.